Thank you so much. Good evening and welcome to the program. Tonight, bombshells and a bitter real estate rivalry boils over as police go after South Australia's most controversial real estate agent. But is Hayley Marley Duncan the target of a hate campaign in the country town of Gawler to bring down her business? Frank Pangallo continues his series. Get a life no. and stop slandering me. People lie because the charges were dropped, because she lied. Lies are dangerous in my opinion. Maverick real estate agent Hayley Marley Duncan reckons she stakes everything on the truth. One thing I can't tolerate is lying. But tonight, it all hangs by a thread. We've got witness, independent witnesses who are providing statements with police at this stupid? present time. Seriously, are you okay. stupid? Right. There's footage here. So Do you, you want to see you it? Are, you are now under arrest for breaching the bail. Do you want Bitter rivalry with a Ray White agency a few doors down from Haley's business boils over. Please explain to me how you get away with telling people that I'm dangerous. And okay. takes a more shocking turn when Ray White's property manager, Kylie Duffield, tells the Gawler police hothead Haley made these threats yeah, to kill her during an abusive phone call. You better watch your back. I am following every step you make. I will be at every appraisal you go to. I am going to take you down, bitch. Keep going. I will kill you. I am going to stab you in the f***ing back where it hurts. Every step you take, I am going to have that knife next to me. I am following you. She says in her police statement that she became frightened and emotional because members of her family were the victims of the horrific Kapunda triple murders. I was in so much fear for my life as I knew she was watching me from somewhere and I couldn't see her. She had threatened to stab me in the back where it hurts and was going to keep the knives with her. I felt alone and frightened. With police already aware of Haley's volatile character, they acted swiftly on Duffield's detailed allegations, taking a stunned Haley into custody. And I said, what for? And they said, oh, for threatening a life. And I said, I haven't threatened anyone's life. Like, what are you talking about? And they wouldn't tell me. They just said, come with us, you're under arrest. And that was it. However, we're about to reveal bombshell revelations which have shaken Haley's confidence in police to act fairly and independently in this gossip-plagued country town. Then they can't even park in the street without them approaching me now. And then they're trying to get people to lie in affidavits to try and get me arrested for something I didn't do. Hayley doesn't deny using a few choice words to abuse Kylie Duffield in that phone call, accusing her of spreading rumours about her marriage and her business, but she vehemently rejects any chilling threats to kill. You heard me. Bye-bye now. This is just outrageous that she can lie. And, and I was yelling there saying, police are stupid and, you know, I hope you're going to charge her for this. and Because it's malicious. Like, you don't go lying to police to get somebody arrested for something they didn't do. She's the typical fiery redhead. Uh, she doesn't suffer fools. Um, you know, you cross her, you do the wrong thing by her, you'll hear about it. But with a warlike personality, who could believe Haley's account of that phone call? If our viewer poll is any guide, most would have hanged Haley for the crime. But friend Sharon Ashcroft isn't one of them. It's not in Haley's nature to, to follow through with any of those types of things and uh, the wording that was said at the time is not something Haley would have said. It's not her terminology. A conviction could result in a jail term and see Haley lose the real estate agent's licence she's held for 20 years and destroy her lucrative business. Her enemies would no doubt rejoice at that. On hearsay, where was their evidence? To, you know, can I just phone up and say that Frank Pangello's um, threatened me and you're going to get arrested? Is that what they're saying? Is that how it works? I don't think so. Well, here's where things begin to take an outrageous, if not scandalous, twist. Yeah, well, they're trying to teach me a lesson, apparently. From what we experienced, we think that the Gawler police have it in for Haley, and they're supposed to have an unbiased opinion. In her police statement, Kylie Duffield said she had a witness to the phone call who also started crying at seeing her distressed state. Haley must have caught on to the fact that I had a witness and said, oh yes, smart, aren't we? Not quite right. No, my wife was not distressed at all and she didn't find the phone call distressing because she didn't hear anything. Duffield didn't know her prized witness was actually one of Haley's landlords. We engage Haley because she's got a no-nonsense approach, she's hard on tenants and she's straight up front. 
The woman's husband, who prefers they not be identified, says the police didn't take it well when his wife declined to provide them with a statement. The policewoman seemed frustrated and that's when she said someone needs to take Hayley down or teach her a lesson and someone needs to stand up to her. I think it was inappropriate conduct for a police officer because in this situation they should be neutral and hear both sides of the story. Now if the arresting police did that, they could have saved themselves from serious embarrassment. What did you have? I had video uh, like cameras in my office that picked up the conversation. I told them I had the phone records, that I had witnesses because David and Jade were both here. I told them I had cameras in my office and they didn't care. They said, we don't care, they just wanted to arrest me. For audio clarity, here's a re-recorded excerpt of Haley's most aggressive words in that 46 second call. The original remains intact. So just every rental appraisal you go on now, watch your f***ing back, you're a f***ing whore. Keep your f***ing nose out of my business, you know nothing about me. You heard me. Bye bye now. Now compare that to Kylie Duffield's sworn statement. It bears little or no resemblance to what Haley actually said, and certainly nothing about killing her, stabbing her in the back, or following her with a knife. But it didn't take long for the Gawler rumour mill and Ray White's staff to spread the story like wildfire. Why are they talking about you, you think? Because they haven't got a life, and I guess they're jealous. Ray White salesman Matt Bunder, a former problem tenant of Haley's, whom she placed on Ticker's blacklist, described her as a very dangerous person to the owner of a property he was appraising in competition with Haley. When she got wind of it, she challenged Mr Bunda. Matt, you're sitting here. No. I'm out. You're going to listen to Don't push me. Don't push me, Matt. Yeah. Because you know what I'll do. Matt, I wanted to have it out with him. Why is he going around telling people that I'm dangerous and that um, he, he, you know, I don't advertise and I don't do opens. He doesn't know nothing about how I run my business. Absolutely nothing. He's never worked for me. I've never worked with him. Get the story straight. Hello, police. Matt Bunder is slandering me and I've got it on footage. So you want to answer to that, hey? Matthew Bunder. As for threatening to kill Kylie Duffield, when presented with the video evidence, red-faced police had no choice but to drop the case. However, Duffield is now claiming that Haley had tampered with the recording. But IT and audio specialists have told police that didn't occur. So another victory for you? Well, yeah, I suppose so. You know, these people take me on, but they lie doing it. However, Haley's issues with Ray White and Mrs Duffield are far from over. Recently, Duffield had Haley arrested again, this time for technically breaching still outstanding bail conditions when she spoke to us on the footpath in front of the Ray White office. And it's all on footage, you police, and so who are you listening to? Do you, do you understand Who that? are you listening to? OK. No, you we're answer my question. We now, we now need to leave. Don't police. touch me. Get we your hands off me. We Get now, your hands off me. We now need to leave. Haley, in turn, is now suing both the police oh, again, and Duffield for unlawful arrest and malicious intent. Okay. I'm you, waiting for you, my phone. Make, make sure you get a coffee and lunch this time. Yeah, no, I want coffee and lunch this time. Coffee and lunch. Are they out to get you? Yeah, probably, but good luck with that, because I don't do anything wrong. So at the end of the day, I do things my way. If I've got something to say, I'll say it. I don't threaten to kill people. Next on Haley's Law, battling the bureaucrats at the Residential Tenancies Tribunal over bungled judgments. Not only against me, it's against all landlords, in my opinion. They always sit and listen to tenants' lies and their crap, and they do lie every time, and yet they still buy into it, but apparently we're the lies when we have everything on facts. And it's certainly worth mentioning Gawler Police, Kylie Duffield and Ray White Gawler all declined. I certainly have Sir Bob Geldof. He flew to Adelaide yesterday to give us an exclusive inter interview. So we'll hear from the very, very fascinating Sir Bob a little later in the program. But first tonight, Adelaide's gung-ho real estate agent, Hayley Marley Duncan, lifts the lid on the chaos at the Residential Tenancy Tribunal. There have been complaints for some time about a backlog of cases, long delays with judgments and decisions heavily weighted in favour of errant tenants. Now, Hayley doesn't hold back on what she thinks about the tribunal and it's led to her being banned. However, somebody was listening to her. Frank Pangello continues his Fly on the Wall series, Haley's Law. Don't walk Don't into touch me. me again, Haley. Walk into okay. me again and see what happens to you. Do not Don't walk into me. Camera. 
it's been another explosive morning at the Residential Tenancies Tribunal for property manager Hayley Marley Duncan. This time the police are called. They don't exactly roll out the welcome mat for you at the Residential Tenancies Tribunal, no, do I've, they? No, I've been going down there for over 20 years, so they know what I'm pretty well like, and I fight for my landlords, and that's what they don't like about me. I'm probably the only agent that doesn't roll over and just accept their, their ridiculous orders, I will argue tooth and nail, to get what I believe my owners deserve to get. She's just won an eviction order, but this tenant isn't going quietly. Please. Get out of my face. And the, and the police get out of my face. Oh, right. Keep stepping into me and I'll f***ing hit you. I oh, swear right. to God, do not step in my face. There's no love loss between Hayley and some members of the tribunal. And I know she loathes me. She said it in writing. One of them who's made his feelings clear is Mr Vincent. She doesn't come to the tribunal with a great reputation for being calm, sophisticated and elegant, does she? He just thinks he needs to give his opinion every time, which nobody's interested in it. He is just it needs appropriate, to do... though, in a hearing like that, no. for him to give an opinion? Not when... at all. He, shouldn't, he should keep it to himself. If he doesn't like me, who cares, because I hate him more. End of the day, he's got a job to do like I have, so he needs to shut his mouth and do his job. In an extraordinary outburst from someone who should be seen as an independent adjudicator, Mr Vincent didn't hide his contempt while hearing a case presented to him by Haley's assistant Jade Ferronio, part of which we've reenacted here from a tribunal transcript. We know she has an appalling reputation and the tragedy of Miss Marley Duncan is her behaviour and she could run a very good business if she didn't behave this way. Could you possibly go before Mr Vincent again after reading no, this? No, we better not either because clearly that transcript says it all. He's, he thinks very little of me and I think even less of him so that's not going to work. I think the things that he was bringing up was irrelevant. They were his own personal feelings rather than the facts that we'd actually come to the tribunal for. You see, it's no secret that the tribunal has cited Miss Marley Duncan for contempt of the tribunal. And I think the police are going to, or they may be, uh, laying charges against her. Neither the contempt or police charges eventuated, but it didn't stop the then head of the tribunal, Karen Hannan, demanding Haley either apologise or face a three-month ban from attending the tribunal after she berated the staff when they stopped the eviction of a bad tenant, Debbie Breen, at the last minute. You get evicted so on Tuesday. Get someone to fix it. Whatever. Yeah, you get whatever. evicted on Tuesday, so good luck with that. Like we've got an eviction order for this tenant for six weeks rental arrears and they've gone and let her put a barrier to set aside for a light switch, which is not even relevant. As Haley expected, Breen's last-ditch appeal was thrown out and she has yet to repay those substantial arrears. She tries to get me contempt every hearing that I'm in. I've only got to smirk, roll my eyes or make any comment and she tells me I'm contemptuous, so she finds everything contemptuous. Well, it's been our experience that they are always biased against landlords. Um, they seem to um, favour the tenants all the time. Yeah. One of her former landlords, Shane Wilkin, also has a bone to pick with the RTT because of long delays in delivering rather simple decisions. Unless the government wants to start housing all these people themselves, which they can't afford to do, and they want uh, investors like myself and uh, developers to um, provide these people with homes, then yes, it needs to change and we have to be looked after as much as the tenants. In Mr Wilkins' matter, tenant Troy Steele went before Miss Hannon, arguing his rental payments were to be by calendar month, not fortnightly, and later that it contained forged signatures. I'm hoping that she keeps the lease in place to protect my landlords because if she doesn't, my landlords will then be out of pocket because a tenant decides to default. When do you expect to get a decision? I'm not sure, a couple of days or sometimes they take weeks. Well, try an unbelievable eight months. Mr Steele lost. So you've accused them under oath of forging your signature. And you know that's not the case, because that's your signature on there. He's wasted everybody's time. He's come in his suit, lied. But far too late for Shane Wilkins, who was left with no rental income. Got behind with the house, paying for pressure on us, so we've had to sell the house. In this market, we've probably lost $40,000 on the house because of the down market. They waste too much time. No wonder they're so behind here. If they actually ran their cases more promptly, they'd, they'd get them all through. But there's no leniency for Haley from the RTT. A tribunal member orders both of us removed from the building while attending a hearing involving a rogue tenant, Shane Doige, 
for outstanding arrears. And that's because you called them incompetent? Yeah, I called them incompetent because of a previous order. And um, we've now got a criminal living in a house for free and he's had property damage charges, all sorts of things against him and the tribunal think that's OK. And here's why Hayley tends to lose it. Here's the condition that they leave.